brothers, dear sisters, welcome, Uros here. So today I'm far, far away from my home. I'm actually in Tampa, Arizona. Uh, here is a conference called Natural. And if you're into camps, you definitely should check their website. Uh, and on my left, I have my special friend uh, from Nigeria. Her name is uh, Megan, and she's president of, uh, uh, of Hemophilia Federation of Nigeria. So the first, hi Megan. Hi. <laughs> the first thing I would like to ask you is, uh, how are you related with hemophilia? Wow, that's the beginning of everything. Um, like he said, and permit me, hi brothers and sisters. I'm a person that's a carrier. Um, I have two sons with severe hemophilia A, and that's the first thing I am. And that's the first thing that brings me to the hemophilia world. I carry hemophilia gene. I have two wonderful boys who have hemophilia. Okay. Uh, and um, how is the situation in Nigeria with the treatment? Um, ground zero. Okay. Um, it's nothing on ground. And so it's very difficult if you have a child with hemophilia in Nigeria because it's like... There is no education, the diagnosis is very poor, the management is zero, and it's, like I said, it's just ground zero, nothing. And if I'm not wrong, you made a decision to uh, do at least ground one, or even uh, more. Uh, uh, exactly, ground one, lay the basic foundation. Yeah. Okay. And uh, tell me something, what's the difference between you as a parent and other parents, why you decided to uh, make a change? Um, for everything in life, there's always something that inspires you. There's always something that pushes you forward. There's always something that says, go for it. Um, I've always been around kids. I've always loved children. And so when I started having my own kids, and I had my son, and he has hemophilia, and I was told by my doctor that he was going to die before the age of three. And um, I decided that no, something has to change. But what will change? What difference can I make in a big country like my country, 160 million people? What could I do? And so I first spent my first eight years wondering feeling sorry for myself and nothing changed about my son. In that eight years he had seven blood transfusions. Now the fear of HIV and mm -hmm. hepatitis yeah. pushed me to go for. That was the inspiration. I was determined that my son cannot continue to get blood transfusions because he stands the risk of being transfused and getting HIV or hepatitis. And I knew if I don't do something different, that mm -hmm. might happen. So the fear of that fear, okay. pushed me forward. So that, my inspiration was actually fear. <laughs> and do you think that your profession, you were a... a I'm a graphic designer. designer. Helped you on yes. this path? It did, because so many things you need to put out there. So, you know, most times when you send a full-page letter to people, yep. they might not read it. Or you send a graphic expression, yeah. pictures, it catches the attention of people. So I kind of use that to do most of our graphic things, to put graphic expression into what people are suffering with hemophilia in my country. And I use that as the basic skill, as my own contribution to the society. Mm -hmm. And how do you, after you set a goal, that you want to do a change, how, how did you plan to make this change? Uh, initially, it was just like, let's start a hemophilia organization and let's find people with hemophilia yeah. because in eight years of my son's life, I never met one other person who has a son with hemophilia or who is a person with hemophilia. So, I was like, is it just my son? No. <laughs> and so I was like, we need to find people. So the first goal that I actually set, and that was like 
10 years ago, yeah. 2005, was we need to find other people with hemophilia. And so when we started, that was our goal. Mm -hmm. The goal was just to find people. And when we started achieving that, and yeah. we got to our first 45 patients, the goal moved to we need to get treatment for these patients. And so our goals change okay. as the time grows. When we started the foundation, it was about finding patients. When we got the patients, it was about finding treatment. When we started getting donated treatment products, it's now about empowering these patients. Okay. And so that was where we got into CAPS. Uh -huh. So your achievements were, firstly, getting patients. Getting patients, finding treatment for patients, yeah. though not good enough, but at least we could find treatment other yeah. than blood transfusions. And then now we're empowering our patients, giving them a sense of dignity, yeah. a sense of independence, and a sense of, I feel it's not as bad as people think. I agree, I agree. Um, I believe that this is really inspiration for, for everyone, you know, starting something new in, in a country that has basically nothing, in a way, in terms of treatment especially. Um, so, um, do you have any last thoughts for our brothers and sisters around the world? You know, I, I've always told people, the bleeding disorders community is a wonderful community and like someone coming from a developing country where there's nothing you would want to say you hate having a child with hemophilia or with von Willebrands or other rare bleeding disorders because there is no proper care like the developed countries but when I look back at the past 10 years after I started the hemophilia foundation and look at the wonderful people that have come to meet around the world, not just in my country. Look at the support that I get from these people, the inspiration I draw from these people, the strength I get from these people. I've told someone, if I have an opportunity to turn back the hands of the clock and choose if my son will have hemophilia, I will say yes. Because it brings out the best in you. For me, hemophilia gave me a different dimension to my career, to my world, to what I do. It opened my horizon to know some strengths that I had and I didn't know I have. It made me see some weaknesses that I actually didn't know I have. And it is wonderful. So you out there, you have hemophilia, you're a girl, you're a boy, your father or mother to a child with hemophilia, just allow them to live their lives. Love that child, see the child first before seeing the hemophilia. And make that child climb new heights and let them see what's there on the horizon. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Megan, for Thank taking you. your time. Thank you.